Hey everyone, my name is Charlotte and I am a writer and an aspiring fantasy author. Aspiring, not inspiring. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I made this channel to vlog my experience of finishing the rewrite of a fantasy novel that I published when I was 17, which admittedly was a very long time ago. It's almost been 10 years, which <sighs> more on that. <laughs> later in this video but um for those that don't know this is this is the book the winds of destiny it is the first installment in a young adult fantasy trilogy portal fantasy specifically and yeah um it's been once again <laughs> a very long time since i have sat in front of camera or vlogged anything but specifically anything related to writing so the last time you guys saw me i was working on the rewrite of this book for those that don't know again like if you're new here <laughs> Um, I decided to start rewriting this fantasy book because like I said it had been like 10 years <laughs> since I published it and I have grown a lot as a writer since then and so I really have been working on the rest of the trilogy specifically the second book for almost as long as this book has been out and i really want to finish this trilogy i really just want to have a completed project is my main goal because of all of that i actually decided to rewrite this first book because i felt like the writing in the second book and the way i write now is just infinitely better <laughs> than what it was when i was 17 and i really want to do this story justice because i believe in this story and I believe it's a story that I've been called to write and share with people. Yeah, so that's the long-winded answer as to why I'm rewriting a book I already published. To specify, this was a self-published book. Well, okay, it was like a hybrid with a hybrid publisher. You can watch a previous video to know the story of how to publish this and why it was such a disaster, but you can do that on your own time because that's not what this video is about. <laughs> anyway, so I'm here today to <laughs> spill the beans to tell you guys why I I haven't posted a video in so long but i'm also just like really excited to share with you guys a lot of the changes that have happened in my life and just in like this last year and in my journey as a writer and specifically with my journey with the winds of destiny trilogy yeah so i'm gonna be sharing the the where and what's of my life if you care about this video and you you're really interested in my journey as an author i would love for you to like this video first of all i also would love for you to subscribe to my channel and follow along when I decide that I have it in me to post anything because your support means a lot and again like I started this channel to document my journey with finishing this trilogy but I did also start it with the intention of building a writing community and a community of readers and people that you know are on the same journey as me honestly and so if you're one of those people definitely subscribe to my channel definitely leave a comment you can follow me on instagram at charlotte e craig writes and on tiktok same handle um yeah let's be friends um let's just chat grab a drink i clearly this is like watered down iced coffee now but i'm gonna drink it anyways and yeah let's get into it this down because <laughs> I don't I don't I need to talk with my hands um okay so there have been two major changes in my life since we last spoke the last time I uploaded a video was actually my ballad of songbirds and snakes read I think I mentioned some writing updates in that video but I wasn't really talking a lot about it <laughs> and I wish I did <laughs> because then I could accurately tell you where I was at in my manuscripts. I don't have that information, but what I can remember is I believe I was nearing the end of act three. Personally, I've been using a four act structure for my book, specifically for The Winds of Destiny, just because for me, four acts makes more sense in my brain than three acts. A lot of my outlining that I've been doing for this series so far which like is a miracle because when i first wrote this book i didn't i wrote it by the seat of my pants which i deeply deeply regret so now i'm trying to like circle back and actually outline and make a plan for this book and also for the rest of the trilogy too so i was near the end of act three which for me wasn't the final act it was like the second last act and basically 
my deadline was the end of December and if you follow me on Instagram you actually already know this news but um, I did finish writing the book. I finished writing the draft. It's the first draft of the rewrite and <sighs> it was emotional. Everyone, I feel like every author always says like it's so emotional when you finish the the draft of a book but like for me this had like a lot of of weight <laughs> to it because i feel like writing this trilogy has been a freaking battle since the beginning i started writing this book back in middle school it was not the first book that i started writing but the first couple books that i wrote really laid out the groundwork for the world building of this book and also carried some of the tropes and other elements that I really wanted to include in this story. I wrote I think three different drafts of this book before I moved it into publication and literally from the moment I finished the first book I dove into writing the second book and the second book was extremely difficult for me to write because I didn't have an outline <laughs> because I didn't know how, what my characters wanted. I didn't know where I wanted the story to go or what like specific theme or I don't really want to say the word message but just what I really wanted emotionally to get across to my readership and part of the reason why I didn't know those things is because no one taught me how to do them. I had no concept of what made a good story and it's crazy that that's the truth because I was in a 12th grade creative writing class and then when I went to post-secondary school I took English as my major and creative writing as a minor and um my experience with the creative program the creative writing program at that school was horrible um <laughs> and they didn't teach me like nowhere did anyone teach me about good storytelling or what makes a good story or how to write re relatable characters how to write characters that feel so real like no one taught me anything <laughs> about story structure and i really feel like i really missed out on a lot of that education so during the pandemic when i was working on a second fantasy project that i i started when i was was in university while i was working on the second book for the winds of destiny during covid i was like okay maybe i should stop what i'm doing with the winds of destiny maybe i should give up maybe i should start something new which i you know <laughs> we've all been there but yeah I like really wanted to start something new but I wanted to learn more about the art of story first and so I went to YouTube University I did Brandon Sanderson's fantasy lecture series both of them there's like a bunch on there's like two different versions online I did two of them I watched a lot of Kate Cavanaugh videos, Abby Emmons, like anything I could find on YouTube that would teach me this, I was devouring that all through COVID. And eventually I kind of gave up on trying to start this other series because I just didn't feel ready to work on it yet. And I realized that the reason I didn't feel ready to start that is because I needed to finish the Winds of Destiny trilogy. It was really internally bothering me that I had left this project unfinished. And I know that, you know, you determine a lot of the times, like, am I gonna shelve a project? Am I gonna like continue with a project? Like we have to make those decisions as authors. And sometimes we do have to let go of projects, but I just felt this intense pull during COVID to return to this world and to these characters, specifically the protagonist, Carter Olson. And the reason for that, I believe now that I'm, I'm kind of like on the other side of, of getting to that point, it was because everything Carter experienced in that book, if honed and corrected, completely encapsulates the experience that I was feeling during COVID. Feeling lost, feeling like I didn't know myself because I graduated in the middle of COVID. I, you know, there was like a lot of other stuff going on. I kind of was having my quarter life crisis when I was 21, which, wow, <laughs> it, it was really hard for me. And like one of the huge things that was like really bothering me is that I didn't know what I wanted to do as a career. I knew I wanted to be an author and I kept flip-flopping between wanting to be a full-time author, wanting to be, you know, work a job, part-time job maybe, and write on the side. That always was just a huge debate in my mind. Like I went into college wanting to be an author and wanting to learn more about literature and wanting to write about literature and talk about it and make my own. Like that's literally why I went to school and to get a degree. 
but whatever. <laughs> so those are like my my goals and my dreams for going to to university. And when I realized that in the winds, it was actually my dad who pointed this out to me because something he liked about the first Winds of Destiny book was that you were following a character who didn't know what she wanted and had to go away from where she was and look to an outside source to find that truth about herself. And that just, I was like, dang dad, you know way more about my book than I do. <laughs> like, what? And so I decided to rewrite The Winds of Destiny and I decided to finish the series, republish it. And that's, that's my goal for that. So I started rewriting The Winds of Destiny in September of 2022. And my goal was to finish the rewrite by, I believe it was, originally it was March of 2023. Then I moved it to December of 2023 because I was like, no way, I'm not gonna be able to do it. I didn't, but the thing is, is I was really hopeful it wasn't gonna take me so long. But then a lot of life stuff happened and it was really good life stuff. I ended up moving to Florida, which was extremely unexpected. I got engaged that same month. There was obviously a lot of emotional stuff that was coming with that, that made me not want to sit down and write. And on top of that, me and my husband were planning on getting married. So we were like in that same year. So we were planning a wedding. And basically a lot of life stuff happened. So I had to push the deadline to December and me and my husband had to move around a lot too, which kept interrupting my flow and routine. And in the midst of all of that, I also was getting discouraged again about my writing, not feeling good enough, not feeling like the trilogy is gonna ever be finished. And then I snapped out of it and I was like, you know what? One of the things that's stressing me out right now more than writing is posting on social media. I, I enjoy the internet. The internet brings me a lot of entertainment. I love that we can easily market ourselves online now as independent creatives, but um, it takes a lot of time and a lot of creative energy. And I, in like September and October, I really felt God leading me to just kind of step back from a lot of that and to just take a pause and reprioritize. In a previous video, which you can watch, I'll leave it linked somewhere on the screen. In a previous video, I talked about how how I took a break from social media and how I just like needed that time to refresh and rethink what my priorities were. And I came to the conclusion that my priority was to write. I don't necessarily want to be a content creator. I don't necessarily want YouTube or TikTok or whatever to be my full-time job. I just want to write books and I want to share them with people and I want other people to enjoy these stories with me um, so that I'm not alone. So I decided to step back from social media and to give myself the time to actually write my book and in that time i also was looking for a job because i got my work permit this government loves me guys i really hope they do because i need to live here but i got my work permit um and that changed everything it meant that i could work which my husband and i really need because we are not made for the starving artist life, I'm, I'm sure. Me being able to work was a blessing, but finding a job. So we're circling back to where I started with this narrative, or at least like near the beginning. I still don't know what I wanna do. I still had no idea. I still, even now, I feel like I don't wanna like, I don't wanna make these bold statements over how I feel now, but like in that moment, I was like, great, I can work, but what am I doing? Like where do I want to work? Thankfully, this time I wasn't thinking I'm going to get a job and it's going to be my career. <laughs> this time I was like, you know what? I'm going to find a place that I like to work at. It's going to be easy that I can just make money from and come home and write and be motivated to write. So those were my goals in job hunting. And I was like, you know what? I have experience with administration. I used to work at Indigo, Chapters Indigo. I could work at Barnes and Noble. They didn't want me. I like H&M. I could do retail H&M. And then I was like, okay, let me just go the admin route because they have good benefits, good pay, whatever. And it aligns with some of the skills that I have. So I started looking for admin jobs and it wasn't really working out so well. Also, I have some experience with social media creation, I guess, like from 
doing stuff personally but I also was a freelance publicity writer for a lot of 2020 and 2021. I did a lot of like writing artist bios and writing blog posts and press releases for independent musicians. So I had some background with that as well which like I guess would fit more into like PR communications but I didn't want to go down that road. <laughs> I was adamant on just getting just getting an an easy job. A so what is it called? Like a soft girl job or something? I don't know. Like just like a mindless job. I just wanted a mindless job so that I would hate my job and I would want to be a full-time writer. It sounds so bad, but that's literally what I wanted. And that's what a lot of writers were recommending is that you get something like that so that you can focus more on your writing. But a lot of that changed. I honestly, like what I personally believe is that this was like a God directed thing. Um, I ended up getting connected with a nonprofit organization in my neighborhood that works with homeless women with children fire i came across this organization and was just like if i did do this communication stuff like that's that's who i would want to work for and but at first I, they didn't have a position for that so i applied as like a volunteer coordinator and i didn't get the position which I was cool with and honestly I thought that it was a dead end I was like okay you know Lord you know <laughs> you know what I need right now you know what I want you know I want to be a writer you know that I just want a dumb job so that I can write on the side and then that workplace the nonprofit got back to me and they were like hey we might have another job for you and so the same week that I finished writing the winds of destiny I actually ended up getting a job as a communications coordinator for this nonprofit organization. The main reason they hired me is because of my writing skills, which was really encouraging because I hadn't gotten many compliments from anyone in a long time about my writing because I haven't shared anything. For them to read my stuff from like a couple years ago and just be like, we need a strong writer on our team and we think you're the person, that was that that hit me in the feels a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. And I ended up scrapping my plan to just get a stupid job <laughs> and write on the side because I realized that there was a lot about this job that could be very fulfilling for me, more than even if I was being an author full time. Um, So I took the job and now I get paid to write and play on social media for a good cause. <laughs> and that's also why I have it done a video in a long time because now I work nine to five. I don't have a lot of time for creative stuff. But that being said, I am extremely hopeful and motivated about my writing now more than I have been when I wasn't working. And I think now it's because I have to fight for that time. Like I have to work writing into my schedule. And honestly, writing feels way more like a reward now than it did before. And also I think a lot of my goals and dreams for my journey as an author have changed. Being a full-time author like might still be something I want to do it might be something I pursue one day but it doesn't have to be right now and honestly like it's not realistic for me to do it right now because I need benefits and I need a job to make money to live so that I can write so that I can publish and make money from my books so I just I, I might still want to be a full-time author one day but I also like the idea of taking things slow um, and I think I've been really embracing that during this time that I've had um, away from YouTube away from TikTok, away from posting about my writing and talking about it online I think that I've just gained a lot of perspective like I don't have to achieve all these dreams right now like one of the beautiful things about being a writer is that it's something you can do and be successful in when you're like in your 80s a lot of our greatest writers weren't even alive to see their success and like i'm okay with that for me personally i'd be fine with that so <laughs> i talked way longer than i intended to but i think it was just important for me to give you guys the full scope of this story just because i feel like there's a lot of like cool things that have been happening in my life that god has like made possible in my life and you're on here to follow my very transparent and realistic journey <laughs> as a an aspiring author and this is part of the journey full-time jobs finishing a book but isn't it cool that it happened in the same week it literally happened before Christmas. So I knew that I was entering the new year having finished a draft of a book and I was gonna be starting a new job. It felt so good. So now we're at the part of the video where I tell you guys what I've been doing writing wise and what are my plans for this year in regards to writing. Since I started my new job and finished writing the first draft of The Winds of Destiny, moving into the new year felt very fresh. I 
didn't have a manuscript hovering over me and I was able to ease into my new job. I was able to pick up in a routine this month in January and just get used to what the expectations are and everything and I needed that time for that. I needed to focus on that and to focus on getting into a new routine. And I also needed a break from my manuscript so that I can start revisions with more of like a fresh mindset and a fresh perspective which will help me make the changes that need to be made. So I haven't written anything really this month. My focus was really just get used to having a nine to five. I haven't worked in a long time, so it has been pretty difficult, but it's been really good too. I really love what I'm doing and I really enjoy the structure that my day has now. But yeah, so I haven't touched my manuscript, but what I have been doing is I have been doing some, I've basically been in the waiting period between finishing the first draft and starting revisions. I haven't even printed my manuscript yet because I knew that if I printed it, I was gonna start revisions. So I just denied myself the opportunity to print it so that I could really focus on just taking that time away from my book. I, but I don't like taking myself too far away from it. So in order to keep myself kind of in the realm of the story, I made a list of things that I needed to work on in my manuscript. And some of those things were character building, series outlining, and honing my outline for this first book, and actually writing down my notes. So I have notes everywhere or like notes in my head. And so I'm trying to organize a lot of my notes in Scrivener. And that's really what I've been focusing on. I've done a lot more character work. And one of the ways I've been working on those things too is I got, I actually ordered Save the Cat Writes a Young Adult Novel. And I, I've read the first Save the Cat book that she came out with, not the screenwriting one, just like the Save the Cat Writes a Novel. And that was like really great. And there is a lot of overlap here, but I like that this is specific to YA because that's what my trilogy is and she has a lot in this too about writing series and outlining a series so I wanted to just do some more research and then apply that to my book and what I'm doing right now so that's what I've been up to I've been really inconsistent with it but so far I've been making a lot of progress and I've noticed that since taking time away from my manuscript even I've just formed a lot more ideas and I have a lot more clarity about the changes I need to make in regards to the characters and the plot <sighs> Now, what what am, what are my plans for this year? I realize that this is going up in February, but <laughs> I needed time to think about what my plans are. So it's coming up on like the 10 year anniversary of The Winds of Destiny being published, like the version that's published right now. So I really wanna finish this rewrite because that's a crazy amount of time. And I also want to finish editing the sequel, The Tides of Fate, which is already finished, but I need to edit it <laughs> and also line it up with some of the changes that I've had to make in the first book, which a little bit more than I first intended, but that's fine. What I'm trying to do right now is my goal is to get The Winds of Destiny and The Tides of Fate ready for the end of this year. And I'll y'all do with that what you will. And I also want to have an outline for the last book in my back pocket so that next year I can write the third book. Those are my goals. <laughs> and my revision stage, I guess, is gonna be starting when this video comes up. Um, if you follow me on TikTok, again, at Charlotte E. Craig Writes, you can follow my journey a lot more closely there because I'm planning on filming a lot more videos about revisions. That's mostly where I'm gonna be posting a lot of my updates. I'm probably not gonna be doing YouTube as much just because I don't have time. But I want to do more update videos and just keep you guys in the loop on this journey because I want you guys to follow this journey with me and I wanna document this journey of finishing this book series as well. So I am going to be posting on here once a month is the goal, maybe twice a month, depending on <laughs> if I have time and if I'm really feeling like it, but yeah. So that's, that's the plan, that's the writing plan. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I know this <laughs> probably was longer, than I originally thought it was gonna be, but I really hope that you get some encouragement out of it, some inspiration out of it. Um, I hope that your writing plans and goals go really well this year. What are your goals this year? Actually, that's what I wanna know. Let In the comments, tell me what your writing goals are for 2024. And if you don't have one specific for 2024, what are you writing right now? Cause I wanna know. This is about building community, so I need to, I need something from you too. I will shut up now. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next month in my next video. Bye.